Charlie, what's up, brother? How are you? Uh, I'm doing great, Brody. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. You ready to talk about the power of words? Let's do it. It was a good week. Good topic. Powerful. We did, man. We had another. We had a couple of fantastic meetings, didn't we? Oh yeah. This this these were uh, this was a, a memorable week. Um, you know, you could just tell the impact that it was having on the guys on the call. So, real real good topic for the week. Absolutely. All right. So the power of words. If I think back to last week, what we talked about was um, the messages that we tell ourselves, and those messages may be in the form of thoughts, stories, the messages. And so sort of the punchline there was we need to be intentional about our messages. First and foremost, we need to have awareness around the messaging that's going on inside of our minds, the stories we tell ourselves, those thoughts, have awareness around that. And remember, we told people, we talked about, don't underestimate that first step of awareness. That may take days, weeks, months, or even years, but it's huge. Secondly, we talked about being intentional um, with what we feed on. So, you know, negative news versus spending time, good time with good people. Um, so be just being very intentional about feeding on good stuff. All to say that's what sort of produces the thoughts, stories, and messages that are going on in our minds. And then yeah. from those messages, they manifest or sort of turn into words. So in other words, words are the byproducts of the messages that are going on inside of that mind. So a lot of times those words are representative of where that man is in his life or in his current situation. Does that, does that make sense, Charlie? It does. It, it really does. I mean, the, the messages we tell ourselves is the source. I mean, that is, that is the fundamental source to what comes out of our mouth, our attitudes, the feelings that we have, our emotions. Absolutely. Yeah. So based on that, one of the first, I think, points to bring up here for, for, for this audience and, and one of the couple of things that came out of the calls is first and foremost, the power of the word. Once it goes out, once those words leave my mouth, I don't get to take them back. So they're one directional. Thoughts on that, Charlie? No, it's, uh, you know, it just makes sense. It's not often that we think about that, out words being one directional, but, uh, but in this sense, uh, you just can't take it back. We've talked about that. You know, you growing up, you knew that you couldn't take words back. But uh, many of us think that the words really don't matter that we say. Um, but the truth is, we're not the judge of that. The people that we're talking to are the judge. And, uh, and it's just as impactful to them, even though it might not be very powerful in our own thoughts. So, yeah, the, the one directional nature is huge. It's a huge uh, reminder uh, to, to the group on how powerful your words can be. That's right. Now, just because they're one directional and we can't take them back, so we do want to get them right, it doesn't mean that we couldn't uh, and shouldn't go back and say, I'm sorry. Apologies still matter. They're the next best thing, knowing that, that words are one directional. There's still a place for apologies in this. That's right. And to me, I see that apologies as something where you have a conflict between the words that you said and the messages that are, you're telling yourself, right? You didn't maybe articulate the words in the appropriate fashion. And, uh, and that's when you have to go and, and you know, have, have some humility and, and apologize for, uh, misrepresenting your message. Absolutely. Makes sense. All right. So I think the other thing that was no surprise to us, but it came very much came across in both meetings is the power of words. And so in our case, we had a 51 year old man. So we asked the question, who can remember a time um, where words were spoken to you, positive or negative, that very much stuck in your mind that you remember today? And in our case, we had a guy that was in college that these were nice words. And he was told he was a great writer. So here he is, a 51-year-old man remembering those exact words that exact day by that exact person, those words that were spoken to him. And what is that, like 30 years ago? So to me, that just reinforces the power of words. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, and I mean, that, that happens to all, you know, so many men, so many people in lives uh, have had impacts very similar to that. Uh, in their childhood, as they were growing up, and so they're, you know, in the, the developmental stages, you hear something that impacts you for life, and that was just a great example of that, you know, on the on the Tuesday call. That's right, and that was for the positive. Think, and we love those. And then on the flip side, it also rings true, right? So one of the men shared 
that he was told, for example, he's a bull in the China cabinet. And so he's, I don't know, mid fifties. So think about that. So I don't know when he got that message when he was 15. So do the math on that 40 years that he's taken on and kept that message. So we talk a little bit about the core wound and the big wounds. And so it just shows the power of words are huge in this, especially when it comes to um, those of us that have sort of positions of account of influence. Um, and that may be around, um, you know, sort of younger people. So, you know, to me, those are examples of the good use of words and the not so good use of words. Absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 uh, you know, it makes me think about uh, the, the messages that we say and the message that we tell ourselves and um, the bad use of words. Not only does it is it bad for yourself and your own, you know, you're misrepresenting your message, but man, somebody has, has to carry that for 20 plus years. I mean, that's that's something he's had a weight on his shoulders for years, carrying that around. And nobody else is thinking about that except for him, the one who absorbed the words. So, uh, yeah, it just uh, it's 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 really huge and it really is quite humbling. And, and I don't ever want to forget that in my own life. It's when I was, you know, little Jody, seven years old, whatever it may have been. Right. As a little boy, the power of the spoken word from, of course, my dad or a coach or a teacher or just some person of influence, man or woman. And, and now I want to remind myself, hey, I am that person. I am that coach or that teacher. I am that grown up, that uncle. Something as simple as me stating a sentence to a young man or woman can have, and I mean this with humility, a life-changing impact on that boy or girl. Boy, that's absolutely right. And, and so many of us don't realize that we're in that position, that we're in that influential position, especially as we get older. Uh, not seeing that, not being aware is, is, a, is a blind spot. So, and that, that's another piece of awareness that we got this week is, is knowing that we do have that influence. That's right. And the other thing that came out was it's not only what we say, but how we say it. Tone matters. And one of the brothers shared with us around, you know, his use of sarcasm and how that's probably not the best use of words, as we know, of course, when it comes to, say, uh, dealing with or communicating to a seven-year-old. So again, just not, it's not only what we say, but how we say it because tone matters. Absolutely. Yeah. That was uh that was another one uh, where you can, if somebody misrepresents your tone uh, or misunderstands your tone, that that's, that's huge. Um, you could be really asking a question out of curiosity and just because of the tone of your question, uh, somebody else's stress level could go up right? Or, or down, uh, depending on how you say it. So yeah. yeah, yeah, tone matters. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I've got just a brief story to share. You okay if I share it? Sure. And I don't know how impactful this is, uh, but I'm going to share it anyway. So um, I was hanging, so, so yesterday was my son's birthday and uh, mama purchased some LED lights are really cool. So I, while my son Sam was at school, I took the time a couple hours to hang those LED lights around the, the uh, perimeter of his bedroom. And so I felt great, man. He came home and he had LED lights, you know, around his room. I hung a couple of skateboard decks and uh, he was he was very pleasantly surprised. I got some emotion out of a 13 year old, which is not always easy, as you know. That's tough. <laughs> all right. So so he was very pleased. I was pleased. It was all great. And so I wake up this morning and when I walked in, into his room, I saw that a few sections of the lights had fallen down, you know, they're the sticky. And so some of the sections had fallen down. So I was like, I looked at Sam and I was like, Hey, I'll get on that. I'll fix that today. And then Charlie, as I walked away, I kind of got in my head a little bit. And to be honest with you, I was about 90% still proud of what I had done, taken the time, done it, impressed him. He was happy, et cetera, et cetera. But there was a smaller percentage of me that goes, Oh man, like I worked on this and it didn't pan out the way I wanted. Like it, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. And then I went into my mind and I went, well, maybe Sam's disappointed too, because daddy did this and now the string's falling down. Is it a big deal? Probably not. But I went, I chose to go back to Sam, my son, and say, hey, FYI, let me just let you know sort of what I'm thinking about, Sam. I said, man, I was real happy that I put those lights up for you and I saw your, your, your reaction and I know you, enjoy, I know you appreciate it and that's great. I said, but I got to tell you, there's a small piece of me that's a little disappointed. I put those up and they came down. 
And so I, I thought about the way that you may feel, Sam, that, hey, daddy did this, but man, like, it's not what I wanted or not what I expected, not the outcome I was hoping for. And I just wanted him to know that I was thinking that, hey, daddy does not like potentially disappointing you. As small as that may sound, I wanted to communicate that to him. And I said, so of course, I'm not thrilled that the lights came down, but I want you to know, son, I'm going to get on it today. I'm going to get it fixed. And so I say all that to say just my having that conversation with him, first and foremost, I think he was like, okay, where's dad going with this? But I wanted to let him know as a 50 year old man, what's going through my mind, the little small piece of disappointment that was not my intention. Here's what I'm going to do with it. So I just wanted him to kind of see how I was processing it, communicate that to him and how I'm doing something about it. Because at the end of the day, I want him very satisfied. He got it. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thoughts on that, Charlie? Oh, man, that's that's an awesome story. Uh, uh, it, it's just I think, you know, I think a couple of things here. I mean, I think back how many dads were doing that, uh, having that conversation, something so small, uh, seemingly, you know, minuscule, having that type of conversation 50 years ago with their with their son or their daughter. Um, you know, th- the fact that you did that allows him to kind of get to know you a little bit more. I mean, other than without you saying that he's making assumptions and he's, he's assuming that maybe either you don't necessarily care as much as you have just shown by saying what you said to now having this conversation a little bit more transparent and intentional around your feelings. And then you look at it and you think about the compound effect of having these small tidbit of, you know, conversations as he grows up and the impact, the overall impact that's going to have. I mean, it's huge. It, you know, it's, it's just like anything that we do that's worth doing. It takes small steps that are seemingly useless, but in the grand scheme of things, they add up and they're cumulative. And that's, that's kind of what you're describing there. That's a cool story, man. Ah, that's fantastic. Thanks for that. So I guess the, I, the last thing sort of on my mind, at least for, for this conversation, is going back to the power of words um, and the opportunity, no matter what we've done in the past, the opportunity we have going forward. And if I could just reflect on the past, you know, I, I, I asked the guys in both, well, in, in the Tuesday meeting, and I didn't want an answer here. I just wanted them to think about it because I asked myself the question before the meeting. It's if we believe in the power of words, and it's both verbal and written, like a thank you card or an I appreciate you text, doesn't always have to be verbal. When is the last time that I or you or we um, use that for good? So in other words, yesterday, did I build somebody up, encourage or inspire with my words, verbal or written? Okay, well, if not yesterday, what about the day before? What about last week? What about last month? So I asked that question just to get myself and the other men thinking about what are we doing to be intentional about using our words to build other people up? Yeah, that's, uh, that's eye opening when you think back about that, because it's so quick. We're so quick to, you know, to raise awareness on negative items, things that need to be fixed and, and problems that you forget how powerful it is for gratitude and to say thank you and to encourage and, um, and really put out that positive energy with people. So we don't, you know, we don't necessarily make an effort, you know, unless we're intentional about it. And that's the beauty of these calls is that we have a topic, we're aware, we get intentional and we have a, a group to help encourage us to, to continue to do that and get better. That's fantastic. That's our group. That's what we do through most USA. So, uh, Charlie, I appreciate any final or closing words uh, for this conversation. I think you covered it all, man. Great topic again. Words. Uh, it's definitely on the top of my mind now and on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Me too. All right, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one. All right. You too, man. Thanks. Cheers.